Hello folks, hope you're having a good day. On this episode of Hobby Nightmares, we will discuss, or find out, why being a furry in a Games Workshop store can sometimes really, really, really backfire and lead to severe embarrassment. Let's jump in, shall we? Our first Hobby Nightmare today is from Lord Russ. Oh God. And he says, uh, Greetings from the States. To start off, I really enjoy your videos, and many of them have given me some valuable perspectives for things in life, or at the very least, made me feel a little bit less alone and some of my experience with some of my experiences and observations. No problem, man. Eh? Um, on, ex on experiences and on observations, I said something about an airbrush yesterday that people got really, really, really knickers in a t their knickers in a twist about. Guys, if you see me ranting on, on something, Right, and I tell you what I actually think, and then I just go off on a ranting tangent. Please feel free to, dis to disregard what I say in the rant. Do you know what I mean? Don't take it too seriously. Most of it is just me jerking around because, you know... Again, this entire channel is built around the fact that... It's kind of like we're standing at a bar as a bunch of friends talking. You know what I mean? Right? I'm trying to make you laugh. Don't get offended because I had to go at your little toy, alright? Just chill out. Anyway... It also made me feel a bit more connected to this hobby I've gotten myself into. This story is going to start positively, then become a nightmare the hobby saved me from, and then turn into the hobby being my nightmare again. Feel free to take a sip of tea before we get started. So I've been addicted to Warhammer for years. Back in school... Oh, then, then again, you did tell me to sip some tea, so here we go. Mm. Okay. There we go. Back in high school, I knew people that I that liked it, but didn't really know what it was. After high school, uh, my brother-in-law liked it a lot, and I had a couple of friends that were into it, but seemed kind of it seemed kind of overwhelming. I didn't really, uh, and I didn't really like any of the models I had seen. It turns out, I just didn't like the models that my friends specifically were into. But that was all my exposure for the at the time. Eventually, my brother-in-law tried pushing me to get into it with him since he was trying to return to the game, but I was resistant. Eventually, late last year, I decided to try and get a grasp on this Warhammer thing I'd heard of and started watching lore videos on YouTube whilst I was working or doing chores. After about six to seven months of that, I was really interested and wanted to try getting my first box of models. After doing some research, looking at lots of pictures and art, and deep diving into the lore, I finally bought the Sororitas Combat Patrol box back at the end of March. A good choice, by the way. Those are stunning models. Stunning models. If I wasn't already a Grey Knights player, I'd probably collect Sisters of Battle, to be honest with you. They're that good looking. I really like the models. I was anxious about painting them because I wanted them to look good, considering just paying someone I knew to paint them all. But I decided to say, you know what? Screw it. I might as well try. I've attached some pictures of the models I've done. I think you can tell which ones were my early work compared to how I'm doing now. So I did plenty of research and got started. Let's see some of your models, shall we? Because we can't do models without being... without showing them on the channel. Do you know what I mean? Bear with me for just one second. Da -da 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 -da. Can't find them anywhere. Happened today at the store? No, 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 no. Okay. I have to find them later on. Oh, no, no. Found them. Found them. Found them. Right, there, there are loads, man. I, I don't know which ones you want me to want me to put up, so um, I'll just put up a few, and uh, you, you people can make up their own mind. Um, do that one, and we'll do that one. There we go. Lovely stuff. I'll put them all over here. I wonder if I've ever done this before to people when they said, oh, yeah, here's some of my models and I put them on and they've gone, no, I don't want them to be seen. Uh, but if you've done that, then please tell me not to put them up and just to show them to myself. Then that'll be fine. But uh, anyway, let's look at your Space Wolf first because obviously, you know, not everybody is is able to have good taste when they first start the hobby. So don't have a go at him, everybody. Um, I joke. Do you know what? I, I, I'm not really... a a, a space wolf hater like so much it's just you know there we go lovely stuff no ink on there of course 
or anything like that. But yeah, hey, do you know what? You got your colours right. You got your colours spot on. Maybe pick up more details. I don't know. But then again, it's your first model, man. What am I, what am I saying? For a first model, that's awesome. All the paint's very neat and in the right place. Excellent stuff. Excellent stuff. Again, some of the first models I get, sometimes I'm like, oh my god, seriously, that's your first model. And here I am. You know, dry brushing and thinking, god. Okay, yeah, I, I, I get that. that. That's cool, that's cool, that's cool. First models. The last one was the one I really wanted to look at. It looked like an Imperial Knight. Uh -huh. Oh, dude, piss off. You're not new. You're not new. Stop it. Jesus. <sighs> Again, one of, one of the best nights I've seen in a long time. Hello, I've just started in the hobby. There's my brand new model. I've just done. Oh, yeah, piss off. Here we come with the... Oh, just... <laughs> Look at the fading I've got on all of my colours. Oh, it took me ten minutes. Yeah, of course it did. I don't like being a mere mortal in painting. It sucks. My painting's all right. Everyone see my paintings. It's on. It's on the YouTube channel somewhere. But my God, some of these models, man, you're really talented. Well done to you. You're really, really good. Well done. Anyway, moving on with the Arby Nightmare. Uh, where were we? There we go. So I did plenty of research and got started. Turns out I was pretty good at it and really enjoyed it. I managed to finish the whole box within a couple of weeks. About the end of the month, when I was looking to buy more, disaster struck. Feel free to take another tea break. My parents had decided to separate and my dad was moving out. Okay, cool. I still live at home and I'm also a bit autistic so I don't handle change very well. This night was one of the worst of my entire life, having to help my dad pack up his stuff and get set up in his new apartment. None of us knew until the day he was moving out. And my mother, who does not handle showing weakness well, told me to stay at my grandmother's for the weekend so she could weep in private. Okay. I wonder what happened there. There's a story there in itself. After this, I snapped a bit and decided I'm buying the Space Wolves Combat Patrol because I love Vikings and felt Space Marines were sort of a right message, a right, a right of passage in the hobby. A bunch of new, I bought a bunch of new paint for them and an airbrush kit. Well, well, well done to you. And this is what I would spend my free hours doing. And by the way, those of you, again, again, the airbrush thing last night. I think a few of you got like the wrong message there. Okay. You should use all the tools at your disposal to create good models. I think that's what Russ has done here. This isn't an airbrushed model, right? He hasn't just airbrushed this Imperial Knight and called it done. He's airbrushed bits of it that are going to be a pain to paint, and then, because it's going to take, not because not he can't do it, because it'll take forever to paint it, and then painted the rest by brush. That's what he's done. You use all the tools at your disposal. No problem with that. My issue is, when people use a paint, use a, an airbrush, and then tell you they're some of the best painters the world's ever seen when they don't use anything else apart from airbrushing. Seen it happen loads, seen people do it loads where they just airbrush a model, then touch it up a little bit here and there. Dude, you're, that doesn't make you a good painter. I'm sorry, no one's ever gonna convince me otherwise. That doesn't make you a good painter. I airbrush my armpits. That doesn't make me a good painter, right? Use your airbrush, but make sure you're actually painting your model too, guys. Make sure you're getting your brush out and making sure you go over the details and you get everything. 90% of your model should be brushwork, let's be honest. Even the best like painters out there use the airbrush, but they use it sparingly for things that they don't want to do 20 times or things that they're going to really struggle to do over a nice, large, flat surface, things like that. That's what they use it for. They don't just spray the entire thing several different colours from several different angles and then touch up, touch it up a bit and call it done. Dude, you're not a good painter if you do that, and I'm sick of people telling me that they are. You know? Um, Russ isn't doing that. Russ has airbrushed parts of his model, you know, to get really, really, really nice finishes, and he's painted the rest with a brush. And it looks amazing. It looks really, really good. So yeah, feel free to use your airbrushes, man. Just, you know, don't just exclusively use your airbrushes and then tell people that it's, you know, it's some sort of skill that you've got. It's not skillful. You're just spraying a model. Again, I spray my armpits. Does that make me a good a good modeler? No, it doesn't. 
anyway. Um, and this is what I would spend my free hours doing. I would go, I would go to lunch from work, sit down at my painting desk and work on models for an hour. I work from home now, which made things a bit easier for me. Once the workday was finished, back to the desk to paint until 2 or 3 in the morning. My god. And it helped a lot. It gave me something to put my energy into, to distract me when I needed it, and to slow down how much uh, I, I was thinking about my current situation, so I could process it without feeling like the world was ending. Exactly. I said this yesterday. I said this yesterday about that zen moment of painting, right? About getting into that moment. Personally, I've, I've used airbrushes in the past. Uh, once or twice when I've been working Games Workshop and all, all those other times, I've never felt that zen, that, that total concentration, you know, for long periods of time when I'm airbrushing. Do you know what I mean? Like, you, you, you feel it You feel it maybe for a second or two, whereas if you're actually painting, if you're actually painting, you're in there for hours. You're in that zen mindset for hours, and you come away from it completely refreshed, you know? Again, I think a few few people misunderstanding what I meant by that. I'm not saying having that feeling for a mere second whilst you're spraying your models. That's not what I'm saying. I mean a prolonged feeling of utter, complete concentration when you're painting. It's so good for you. It's absolutely so good for you. And I feel like if you're using the airbrush for 90% of your painting, you're missing out on a whole lot of mind-calming, mind not mind-numbing, but mind-calming skills that, you, that you're going through, you know? Anyway, at this point, I'm finishing up my 2,000 points list of my sisters and my space wolves. I've gotten a Leviathan box ready to be painted for when I feel like painting Tyranids. I'm doing the occasional miniature painting commissions, and I'm working on getting a Chaos Knight's army done if the War Dogs would ever get back in stock. But I'm sure you can see my problem here. I can't seem to stop. My pile of shame keeps getting bigger, not because I'm working on it, but because I'm doing so many things at once. I've realised that due to the stress of my family life, I've developed a full-blown addiction to Warhammer 40k, and I'm trying to stop myself from getting back into Age of Sigmar, because that will only strain my wallet even more. Any words of advice or encouragement are always appreciated. Enjoy your tea and have a good night. Okay, um, listen, it's only an addiction, okay, if it starts going into, um, you know, money that you need for rent, and money that you need for things that you actually need in life. Or that you need to save for other things in life that's when it becomes a problem you know um enjoying your hobby isn't an addiction dude i'm sick of people saying that it is it's not okay you like models for god's sake you're not addicted it's not crack i know people say it is i wish that joke wasn't around a lot because because people take it seriously all right it's not crack you're all right <laughs> buy your models as long as you're not as long as you're not putting yourself into like financial difficulties or you're not taking money away from things that you should be saving for and by by that i mean even going on a trip if you've got a choice between going on a trip to somewhere really cool or buying some models and you bought some models yeah then maybe look at it because you need to go out there and look around the world and and the world is your oyster man you need to be out there having experiences but if you're already doing those things and you've got some disposable income and you've already got a pile of shame but you th you see a model that you think is pretty cool fucking buy it just buy it, dude. There's no, there's no problem. Just go for it, right? You're not addicted. You're not addicted. It's fine. You've got a hobby that you enjoy. Stop beating yourselves up, for God's sake. I get these all the time. Oh, I just, I've got a pile of shame. I'm addicted. No, dude, everybody... I've got a pile of shame. I'm not addicted. I'm the most lazy, lazy hobbyist ever. I will paint one Space Marine a night, but I will do it from start to finish. You know what I mean? It'll take me two or three hours and I'll paint one Space Marine. Because I just find it very therapeutic and that's how I paint. Doesn't mean that's the right way to do it, just the way I do it, right? So, like, I'm so, so, so lazy. Ask my Space Marines. They sit there and they go, well, you fucking paint me already. And I'm just, no, I think I'll go and buy another another set, thank you. Everyone does it, man. You're not addicted. It's fine. You're cool, right? Um, again... When it becomes a problem is when you're taking resources and money away from other things to buy toy soldiers or when you're giving time to toy soldiers that you should be using for other things you know like your wife for instance when you get one things like that yeah cool awesome uh, don't beat yourself up just enjoy your hobby dude right it's helping you enjoy your hobby that's all i can say to you so 
If you like what I do, the subscribe button is down below. Please go and hit that button if you like what I do because it does, does, does help out the channel. So thank you so, so, so much if you've taken the time to do that. We're on our way to 16,000 subs. I reckon we can get there before the end of the month. But it's going to be one hell of a push to get there. I wanted 15 this year. We got 15. Maybe let's push for a bonus. Let's get to 16. Let's try and get there over towards December. Um, as I said the other day, I said yesterday... That we are going to be doing an event next year. We're going to be doing that event in Doncaster, which is near Sheffield. Um, it's kind of a middle ground for everybody in the UK to get to. It's, it's in the middle of everybody. Unless you live in Sheffield, then look at you. Um, we are going to be doing event, an event there sometime in June as a big reward for people. And if you are subscribed to the Patreon to help me out financially, or you are a member of the channel, which also helps out the channel financially, then you will get yourself a free box of Yorkshire tea when you turn up to that event and you tell me your username, or I may send you, I may send out a code. I'll probably send out a code to people on on the on the Patreon and my my YouTube members to uh, to come and get their free signed Yorkshire tea box. Can't say any fairer than that. Good lord, what a, what a what a cool thing. Anyway, oh also the the composite games prize draws down below. Please consider helping them out. They're really good guys. They really do a lot for us, and they will be hosting our event next year. So good on them for doing that. And um, let's try and get their, their window fixed. It's ridiculous. They've been in their new location for a few days and somebody smashes their window. What's going on there? There's a prize draw down below where you get to nearly maybe win a prize. And uh, also help out a really good cause in the process. So there you go. Sneed says... <clears throat> Sneed, are you, um, are you a fan of, white, uh, of uh, Red Dwarf, Sneed? No, no. Hello again, Mr. North. Please call me Sneed. I heard the recent write-in from a listener named Dave, who was a bit miffed that Dave is sometimes used as an in-joke for a not-so-good shop owner. So I'd like to tell you about the manager of my game store, who was indeed named Dave. Oh no. Oh no. We're going to trigger that guy again. Please, if you're driving whilst you're listening to this dude, don't drive off the road, please. My hobby journey started with Dungeons and Dragons. My brother and I, as well as some friends, got into it pretty fast and hard. <laughs> and so my bro <laughs> sorry, that just reminds me of the. Have any of you seen that clip of Brock Lesnar when he's trying to be tough in the camera, and he goes, "You tell Randy Orton that I'm coming, and I'm coming hard." <laughs> he just walks. You can tell he knows what he said. He's sort of he's trying to look tough. He's like, oh. and he knows what he said. He just walks off like. Yeah, just you, you tell him. Anyway, my hobby journey started with Dungeons and Dragons. My brother and I, as well as some friends, got into it pretty fast and hard. And so my brother decided to get a 3D printer so we could get some minis to enhance the game experience. So I went to the local friendly game store nearest to me to get paints and brushes and saw the huge wall of 40k miniatures. I had heard of 40k as I work a factory job and spend a good deal of my day listening to YouTube videos of all sorts of lore, various video games, and had heard a little about Warhammer, so I was very curious to say the least. Dave took the time to show me all the models and explain the lore a bit, as well as show me uh, some of his painted models and explain to me how he has been a part of the hobby for a long time and it was always his passion to own his own game store after he retired from real people work, as he put it. I told my brother about it, and he was also up for getting into the hobby after listening to some videos I had sent him about the setting. Shout out to, to Wes Hammer for the great intro series. Okay, yeah, cool. I will shout out to Wes Hammer. He is great, but sort your hair out, dude. I, I just... It's so Californian, man. I don't know where he's from, California, but my God. Oh. Lovely bloke, though. Seems like a really nice bloke. We started frequenting the store as we slowly began building our armies. Daz and Sons for my brother, and Salamanders for myself. Cool, cool. One thing I will say is that when you're working for Games Workshop, I know Dave is at an independent game store, but when you're working for Games Workshop, you're told in no uncertain terms to never talk about your own hobby. Always ask the customer about their hobby and their needs and what they want, right? I once had... A really good interaction with a, with a, with a girl who came into the Games Workshop, and uh, I'm sitting there talking to her, or standing there talking to her, and we're swapping anecdotes about the about the hobby and having a really fun time. 
and she buys a starter box set and heads out, right? Cool. It took me about half an hour to talk to her and, and, and really get, get to grips with what she wanted. But she, get, she got a starter box set. I got my KPI number up a little bit and everyone's happy. I then sit next to my manager who tells me that's probably one of the worst interactions with a customer he's ever seen. Why? Because I talked about myself. I talked about my own hobby and what I was into rather than just listening to her and what she was into. And when I said, well, she asked me what I was into. I, I, I heard what she was into. She told me. And then because she's being polite, she asked me and I told her what I was into. Do you want me to just say, I can't tell you? Like, what do you want me to do? Like, that's how a conversation works. I don't think people making those rules at Games Workshop have real human interactions. There is a Gestalt AI in control of Games Workshop. No one will ever convince me otherwise. Who doesn't understand basic human interactions. They're like androids. Like, what do you like about this space marine? What colours would you like to paint them in? What box set, what other models would you like to get with that space marine? Can you imagine your army in your mind's eye? Cool. Would you like to get those today? Not every fucking conversation will go along those lines. Alright? Anyway. I'm sorry I gave a load of the Games Workshop ex-staffers ex in the chat or in listening to this PTSD there by by, uh, by repeating those uh, catchphrases, but there we go. Uh, Dave was always at the shop and would ask us how our collection was coming and check our, paint, our painted models. He'd also let me borrow any of his Space Marines I needed, which was a massive help when I started. Again, none of these things are allowed in Games Workshop. You know, everything Dave has done here is not allowed at Games Workshop, but, you know, for, for Games Workshop staffers to do. And it's working. Go, go figure. Not only was he very good to the Warhammer community, but he also had nights for kids to come and play and uh, come and into play games like Pokemon in a safe place with adult supervision and would run second edition D&D campaigns for the Longbeards. He cherished and nourished the Warhammer uh, community with tournaments, painting contests and leagues. He had a whole room of 3D printers, so there was always a variety of terrain to use for free and would also print files uh, for people at a very reasonable cost. I met so many people I still call friends now and went from being a bit directionless in terms of hobbies to being constantly excited to see my friends and play more games slash paint. Dave introduced me to what is, for me, a life-changing hobby that opened my creativity, enhanced my social skills and helped me become somewhat of a steward of the hobby for the local scene. As sadly, Dave was no longer able to keep the store open as he had family with health concerns that needed his attention. He is hopefully coming back to reopen the store in a couple of years, but for now, the 40k scene he started has moved to another store and has only grown since. So all being said, thank you Dave, you changed my life, and I'll always cherish the first models I ever bought for 40k that I got from you. They're Primaris Eradicators if, 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 you, if you're curious. Funnily enough, I still haven't finished painting them, but now reminiscing on it's probably about time I do since I just got done painting 2,000 points of Imperial Guard. Anyhow, thanks for reading my rambling and knowing not all Daves are knobs, some are pretty cool dudes. Awesome, man. Lovely, lovely stuff. I'm getting some nice... some nice Friday. Some nice Friday stories. I don't think they're going to stay that way, though. I think they're going to go off a cliff. Let's see. Bobby E says, Hey, Naughty E, Bobby again. <laughs> Naughty E... That's like the shittest rapper in the world. Northy E. Not a hobby nightmare, but just got back from a gaming store and had to share this story as I nearly died of laughter. My friend had an eye appointment. The doctors told him they were going to put drops in his eyes that would impair his vision. So he wouldn't be able to drive for a few hours. So I agreed to be his taxi driver. Anyway... Whilst he was having treatment, I decided to wander around for a bit. I spotted a local gaming store with some Warhammer models in the window, as well as some Star Wars Legion, as I was getting into Star Wars Legion at the time. I thought I'd pop in to kill some time. A few minutes later, an old man with two boys, one about ten and the other about five, walked in. They were his grandkids, I know because they called him Grandad. 
The granddad and the manager struck up a conversation as it turned out it was the older kid's birthday coming up, but the granddad didn't know anything about Warhammer, so he didn't want to risk getting the wrong thing. So he was going to let the kids wander around, browse kits and things like that, whilst he narrowed down his selections. A few minutes later, a couple walked in and started looking at Magic the Gathering cards. I don't mean to stereotype, but you know, blue hair, nose rings, and the girl had a fox red tail clipped to the back of her belt. I think you did a video about another person with a tail recently. I did, I think, a few few weeks ago. The five-year-old sees this and, like a bull to a red flag, yanks the tail as hard as he can, unclipping it from the girl's belt, flailing it around like a mace, shouting, Why do you have a tail? The granddad takes the tail from his grandson and hands it back to the girl, saying she doesn't have a tail. <laughs> oh, I love that the granddad doesn't know what a fairy is. <laughs> so he just gives her back the tail. And no nonsense just goes, she doesn't have a tail, son. She just got fancy dress, doesn't have a tail. Right? That's amazing. I love it. <laughs> That's so funny. That's great. No nonsense, granddad. She doesn't have a tail. The five-year-old replies, Yes, she does. I just grabbed it. At this point... The girl is trying to reattach her tail. The granddad seizes the five-year-old by the arm and starts marching him to the door, quickly followed by his older grandson. All the while, the younger kid is shouting to the girl, what, Why do you have a tail? <laughs> it's great. Almost had to bury my face in a baby Yoda plushie, trying not to laugh. Love the channel as always. <laughs> You're still my go-to when painting, Bobby. That's brilliant. That is brilliant. Oh my god, I love that so much. It's like, but why do you have a tail? <laughs> She's like, getting dragged out the store. The girl like frantically trying to clip it back on again. That must be, that's so embarrassing. That's so... But to be fair though, if you're doing something in public, and if someone calls attention to it, you're going to get embarrassed. It's probably not something you should be doing. Do you know what I mean? Do you know what I'm saying? Like, if you're embarrassed because a kid's taking your your tail off your back because you're pretending to be, you know, a sexualized fox because you're, you're weirdly into bestiality, maybe you shouldn't be. <laughs> if, if you're going to get embarrassed about it. Oh, my God, that's hilarious. That's so funny. Oh, my God. Oh, hang on. One sec. Going to take a sip of tea. Mm. If you're a furry, by the way, or you're into that kind of thing, no judgment from me, dude. All right, you do you. Um, I've known some nice people who were into like My Little Pony and things like that. Like, it's not a, it's not a deal breaker for me. But I, but I do look at you. You get a second glance from me. Do you know what I mean? If you're a brony, if you're a guy who's into My Little Pony, I'm going to give you a second glance and go. Um, I'll check for offside. Do you know what I mean? Well, the, the lads know what I'm saying. I'll check for offside on that one. I'll be like, okay, yeah, right, okay. Are you a bit of a weirdo? Uh, okay, you're not. Okay, we can talk. You know, that kind of a thing. Um, but yeah, it, if, and if you do it in your own home, whatever you do in your own home or online, it, it's your business, man. It's your business. You find love, you find happiness wherever you can, dude. I'm not judging. But like, if you go to an actual public place, you know, dressed as a fox. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> come on. Come on, play the game. Come on. Anyway. Uh, Cave says Good evening North I'm a bit of a lurker on your channel And you can just call me Cave Alright, I will do Yesterday my roommate and I Were at my local hobby store Getting some advanced lessons On using different primers And how to use contrast paint For my Black Templars army Contrast paints? It's black He's painting them black Am I, am I silly? Just paint them black, don't you? you can't contrast black. It's just, it's just black. Um, I also learned about using Pro Acryl base material to decorate my bases. Cool stuff, man. That's cool. Some quick context. I'm not new to the hobby as my father tried to get me involved about 13 years ago with Warhammer Fantasy. You lucky boy. 
Imagine having a dad who's into Warhammer, man. Oh my god. And I will admit, I always loved throwing dice with my father. Even if my Empire Knights and Bretonians couldn't stand against this endless war. Since then, I mostly played D&D and, and the like throughout high school. But recently decided to give 40k a try. Well, at the store I was in... At the store, I was introduced... Uh, to two of the hobby painters that do commissions and paint the stores, decorations, and armies. One was a very chill stoner dude that I can more than vibe with. The other is a well-meaning lady. The guy we'll call Jeb, and the other I'll just call Lassie. Anyway, we were chatting about upcoming shows, and everything seemed fine, as I was getting some real good advice from both of them. I ended up mentioning that I was looking forward to Har the Harry Potter series that was announced for HBO. Jeb expressed interest as well, but Lassie did not. Apparently, she spent time out of the US and whatnot, according to a conversation she had had earlier that day. So, I didn't realise just how big of a landmine I'd stepped on. She started to go on a rant about how JK Rowling was needing more money to fund her anti-LGBT rants. Now, I'm a married man, and I will say I'm a bit of a uh, lip fierce. I don't know what that means. Oh, sorry. I, I bit my lip fiercely. Right. Okay, because that's what you meant. To be honest, I really wanted to tell her how much I would love to watch my wife beat the snot out of, some, out, out of someone for calling her a birthing person, but I didn't. I interrupted her and told her I meant no offence, but I'm just here to learn some new painting techniques and to maybe throw some maths rocks. That's cool, man. That's cool. That this is a hobby store, not a local forum, and that she and that this isn't really the place for politics, so I'll step away from this argument. Shockingly, she didn't continue, but instead excused herself and went home. Jeb said goodbye to her, and I once again went back to applying the base material to my models and proceeded to wait for them to dry to apply my snow material. But after thinking about it, and how quickly Lassie had left, I mentioned to Jeb and my roommate that I feel like I had offended her somehow. And Jeb replied that if she was offended by me, that was on her. That's cool. That's cool. All right. Okay. From his standpoint, I didn't mean to be offensive, nor did, nor did he take it as if I was being offensive. My roommate was utterly shocked, as when I was younger, I would have tried to debate her and probably went on a not-so-good political rant and been branded a racist and every other risk you, uh, you, that you can think of. Jeb looked at him and then me, I just said back, he's not wrong, but I'm much wiser than when I what I used to be, and that there's a time and place for politics, and now isn't the time. Something I had to learn through trial and error, I guess. Anyway, I feel like I, I was low-key an asshole here. What are your thoughts? Okay, um... No, I, 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 you weren't an asshole at all, man. You're like, like, let's not even go there. You weren't an asshole. You were fine. You, you didn't want to discuss politics, so you didn't discuss politics. You, you're you're not. You're, if you're in a public space, you're not beholden to anybody to do anything. If they want to talk about politics and you don't, you can shut down that conversation pronto. And now nah, I'm, I'm not discussing this, right? You didn't even say you disagreed with her. Just say no, no. I, I just I just don't want to talk about politics, right? Again, you did nothing wrong here. Absolutely nothing wrong. This girl, I don't know how she's going to deal with life as it comes out of thick and fast. But yeah, she's not going to deal with it very well if she's essentially leaving a store in a huff because somebody doesn't want to debate her on her, you know, far left leaning pol political stance. You know? You can't debate those people anyway because anybody who's not as far left as them or even more far left is a bigot. So there's, there's just no point in debating them anyway. You may as well just, just shut it down like you did and carry on with your day. So I think you did very well, man. You've got nothing to feel guilty about at all. Um, you know, JK Rowling isn't against trans people, by the way. She's just, she's a woman who likes being identified as a woman and not a, not a birthing person. That's basically what it is, right? And by the way, she's old. She's old, right? When my grandpa says really effed up racist shit, I don't call him a racist. Do you know why? Because he's old. <laughs> That's what they do. You know? I, if, you've, if you've heard stories about my grandpa in the past, you know what a 
what a, a guy he was for for <clears throat> sorry for black people around him in South Africa, right? He gave a lot of people jobs and helped out people and did all that kind of a thing. And so he was looked at by his friends as, as this sort of fucking hippie. You know, he was ultra left wing back then. Now he's not. <laughs> now he's like now he's got exactly the same attitude now as he did back then, but now it comes off as really racist, you know. But he's not. Okay, you've got to take people at their at their age. Again, it's the same thing with history. You can't look back on history, medieval history. Anybody who tells you that medieval people were racist or sexist, feel free to kick them square in the square in their vagina, like right in there. Get your boot right in there, because it's not true. It's not true. Okay, they were people of their time. There's no such thing as racism back then. There's people of their time. Okay, in fact, if you've read anything about medieval or ancient history, they were less racist than we are now. Because if you went into medieval Europe and you're a black person, they'd be, they'd be curious why a black person was there. But the one thing that they would hate you for is if you weren't Christian. If you were a black Christian, and you walked around Europe, they'd be like, hey, that's the guy who's got black skin, that's cool. And they talk to you and shit. L read any, any primary source when they talk about black people. And they're always curious. They're always like, oh, these guys are pretty chill. These guys are pretty cool, right? That's cool. I wonder why they've got skin like that. And they, they're even correct. They go, I wonder if it's because they come from a place where there's lots of sun. They get it wrong because they say they've been burnt by the sun, which isn't correct. You know what I mean? It's a coping. It's, it's how to cope with the heat of the of, of where where they where they're ethnically from, right? So, but it's not. They're not burnt. But that, that's what people thought. People thought, you know, they didn't think they were the devil. They didn't think they were this or that. No, no, no. They they literally went. Oh no, they're probably from a warm climate. That's cool. I'll go speak to them. Maybe I can sell them some of my wares, and they'll go over to you and say, "Hey, would you like a rug?" <laughs> Do you know what I mean? And they'd be like, hey, wait, 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 are you Christian? And you go, yeah. They'd be like, oh, my bro, great, cool, right? Read any primary source. You'll be surprised by how progressive medieval people were for modern standards. Now, even then, I wouldn't call them progressive because they weren't. They were just people of their time. They were people of their time. That's all. And they were really offended if you weren't a Christian. That's what mattered to them. If you were a Jew or a Muslim or anything like that, they would either be very rude to you or they would stone you they would literally kill you right it, it's like okay go and get this person out of our town pronto right but if you were a a black person or even from the middle east or whatever and you were a christian and you're wearing a christian cross they would leave you they would either leave you alone or cast weird glances at you like oh but be polite right again go and try and find go and try and find a a, a medieval incident that is to do with race I, I I beg of you, you won't be able to find one, right? I made a study of this. I've, I've written essays on this. You will not be able to find one. Ancient world, even worse for that, right? There's nothing about race in there because the ancient world had empires that covered the most of the globe that was known at the point. So it was natural to see people from different ethnicities mixing together in cities and things like that. They didn't give a shit. They didn't give a shit. In fact, the Romans hated the Celts. They had nothing against anyone else. They just didn't like the Celts because the Celts burned Rome way back in the day. So there you go. Um, but yeah, people are of their time. They're just of their time. And J.K. Rowling, coming, bringing it back around again, she's just old, dude. She's not a 21st century, you know, post-millennial, ultra-left-wing, right, person. And I think a lot of the people who like Harry Potter... They feel as they, they feel entitled to have their politics represented in Harry Potter because you know they, they see themselves in the, in the in the story, which is fine. But J.K. Rowling doesn't share their politics, and so they get angry, and because they get angry and hurt by that, they call her a turf and all these other you know derogatory things. Where where she's not that at all. She said many 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 times that she she's not against uh, against trans people. She she. Uh, she supports their right to, to have the freedom to be who they are and, and what they are and, and whenever they want to be, right? She's not against trans people. She's against people calling her a fucking birthing person because she's not. She's a woman, all right? And again, if I was a woman, I'd be fucking pissed. 
if someone called me a birthing person. Go fuck yourself. Go fuck yourself. You know what I mean? You're a trans woman. She's a woman. Right? You're both women in my eyes. I don't care. Right? But she's not a birthing person. You don't get to take the title of woman for yourself. Go fuck yourself. Right? That's what that's what's meant by, you know... So that's what J.K. Rowling's stance is. Again, I know, because, again... I'm like, it's weird how many essays I've read about J.K. Rowling this year in creative writing classes, but there you go. So, it's really cool being, like, a lecturer and a teacher because a lot of other people do my research for me. <laughs> so I get to read a lot of really interesting essays. And I can formulate opinions based on other people's research that's been done diligently because they need to, because I, I will mark them down if they don't. Um, so, yeah. Hope you had fun with Hobby Nightmares today. I will speak to you uh, either over the weekend or on Monday. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Have a wonderful weekend. And I'll see you then. Have a good one. Bye now.